Hello, I'm Pablo Repolo, the founder of Edge Cloud Technologies, a consulting agency focused on IoT and edge computing. Over the last year, we have tested a couple of edge gateways and come to the conclusion that it's really possible to bring high security capabilities even to low-end edge hardware with the help of SIM cards. We also take an assumption that during the next 10 years, a significant percentage of small edge gateways will have a 5G on board. So, in some way, they need to be equipped with a certain type of SIM. So, what's actually the SIM card? Besides the well-known plastic in various form factors, there is also eSIM, the same type of SIM but in embedded format, which needs to be soldered on board during the device production. There is also a new way called iSIM, which is similar to SIMOS running in TE, trusted execution environment, in the main core chip. Despite the form factor, today all of this we are calling SIM, subscriber identification module, which is used for authentication users in 3G, 4G, and 5G networks. Let's take a look even deeper what's inside the modern SIM card and how it could help us to secure edge applications. So inside we have an operating system, which is usually Java card, and a number of supplementary functions and security domains. One stands for root security domain and call it ISDR, and a number of ISDPs, which is security domains for profiles, which could be created, updated, or deleted. The key purpose of ISDPs is to delegate a secure space to the mobile operator or some other mobile subscription owners in order to be able to execute remote SIM provisioning over the year. There are two ways to manage profiles, so-called M2M model and consumer model. The key difference between them is how we are initiating profile manipulations. In M2M model, it's done from the backend side uh, towards to the EOACC. While in consumer model, it's initiated from the device side, whether it's smartphone or even IoT device, and stored to the backend infrastructure. All these things are well described in GSMA specs. Few extra words about backend RSP infrastructure. In M2M scenario, shown on the left side, a manual loading subscriptions in SMDP, subscription manager data preparation, which is usually belongs to MNO. And then via SMSR, which is secure router, usually belongs to eSIM owner, downloading a profiles from a different SMDPs. In case of consumer scenario on the right side, profile loading initiated via LPA, which is local profile administration, triggered by a human or some programmable logic on the device side, with further usage of SMDS, which is discovery service, and SMDP Plus, which is combined. Uh, profile data preparation and secure routing for downloading it into EOACC. Both schemas operated and secured by global CI and CA controlled by GSMA with corresponding certification process called GSMA SAS. There is also a new spec has been issued in December 2019 by GSMA and call it IoT Safe, IoT SIM applet for secure end-to-end -end communication. This spec done specifically to secure IoT data and provide a root of trust for a security-less connectivity for device apps. At the moment, there are five reference scenarios in the spec, but I'm pretty sure it could be extended more later on the way. How it could be used? Here, I'm showing ultra-simplified diagram with the purpose not to fall into complex and detailed message flows, but rather highlight the overall use case. This is theoretical, but still quite close to the reality of one of our latest projects. Example of edge gateway, which is handling two main functions. One is to provide a telemetry and controls from the power uh, transformer to local DSO in order to maintain a functioning and energy balancing services. The second function is to send energy metering and, and day ahead prognosis to another organization called here energy supplier. In this scenario, edge gateway infrastructure provider ordering a SIM cards from a factory with initial mobile profiles, 
soldering them on the gateway near to NB-IoT modem, then provision a specific root secure domain with the keys for application security, then ships to clients uh, in order to be mounted in the fields. Once the device appears on air, we can optionally load another mobile subscription tailored for the specific region or specific country thanks to RSP, remote sim provisioning. Then, for each application, we could create a dedicated secure domains, issuing and signing corresponding certificates with the CI, which is behind the scene. Once preparation is done, we could have a secured management communication with a solution provider, for instance, based on pressure keys, sign the metering data for energy company with a specific certificate what they will trust in their region, and secure communication channel with the maintenance and control guys who want to minimize the risk of hacking power equipment under their responsibility. Let's see how it could look under the hood if we would use Edgex Foundry in order to expand this approach for a wider range of cases. SIM card playing a role of secret storage and talking to a security proxy microservice. On management services, we could place a microservice for LPA service, local profile administration, to deal with remote SIM provisioning infrastructure which could be also extended with the logic of profile switchover for redundant connectivity purpose. So, to summarize, it could be a good and cost-efficient way to reuse a SIM card as a root of trust for highly integrated gateways. Also, this could be a subject to extend IoT safe spec for multi-application purpose and also decouple secure uplift functions from a mobile operator profiles in order to allow service providers to manage secure domains for application security independently. I would be happy to discuss this approach with the community here before falling to coding and debugging. Feel free to contact me here or LinkedIn or email and enjoy the rest of ONS. Thank you again. All right, Pablo, thank you so much. We have you now live on the phone bridge. I don't see any Q&A questions, so we can wait for a few minutes for Q&A or feel free if you have any final words that you wanted to give. Yeah, so while we are waiting for any kind of questions, I could add a few words uh, that uh, for now uh, we are actively assessing the possible uh, integration of uh, this kind of solution to uh, Edgex Foundry, or we are also considering Project Eve in this uh, in this direction, and uh, probably. Uh, we for the for the next integration projects we will introduce um, this this solution this kind of solution uh, as integrated part of uh, LF Edge projects and uh, later on we'll be happy to share more experience regarding the kind of practical integration of uh, Edgex Foundry to, to 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 the to the real projects. For the moment, it's uh, it operates under without this kind of component because kind of oh, we have just only two data streams and uh, the, the local virtualization is is done just in the manner of bare metal Linux uh, on the on the edge gateway and uh, just independent processes. Uh, what what we are all of them we are controlling. So please express your questions or any kind of ideas around this area. So would be would be really happy to hear any kind of 
critics or, 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 or real ideas how to how to draw it because not all of the edge gateways has uh, has TPMs. So the the Intel platforms uh, have this uh, embedded. So there is no, this kind of issue is not not really related to to Intel platforms, but rather to to low end edge edge gateways uh, based on ARM, which is quite popular and for massive adoption for for massive purpose, uh, we can push out your IoT approach and introducing the edge gateways means a bit of virtualization near, near to IoT. All right, Pablo, thank you so much. For all of our listeners out there, if you click on the chat box in the top left, you will see where the Slack channel is where we can continue the conversation with Pablo. So thank you, Pablo. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this, and I will make sure that this is on demand for any future listeners. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and happy to talk to you later. Thanks, Pablo. Thank you both.